So here's some oldies but goodies of the New York World Fair World Exposition. And so this is what I mean by just amazing water like and amazing fountains. Just look at this, this beautiful pond out in front with fountains all alongside of it. This big fountain right there. It's like you don't do that and not know how to flush your poop out. Now I know there's, you know, this was in 1939 they're saying and they're saying that they built it then. Uh, so I guess by that point, yeah, they did have, according to the story we've been told, they'd be much further along as far as what they could do engineering wise with water. But I'm saying this is all much, much older. And this is proof that in much older times, they absolutely knew how to do very, very amazing things with, with water, stuff that we're not doing nowadays, stuff that like what you go find where these ponds used to be, where these canals used to be. Nowadays, they're dry, they're empty. We don't use them. Not because it wouldn't be a good thing to, but because they've been decommissioned, put out of use, and nobody really knows them any better. Here's the Trilon and Perisphere. The Perisphere is this huge sphere right here, <laughs> and then the Trilon's this obelisk. And then you'll see that there's, and we'll get, I'll show you some much better shots, but there's this bridge, this is, uh, what do they call it? The heli something, but that's, this is the, a bridge right here that connects the two, and then you take this ramp off the side. This was, they called this one the aviation building. Thought that was pretty interesting. I, again, I've talked, I talked, mentioned this uh, maybe a couple times previously in some videos, but air travel, anciently, our ancestors, absolutely, probably a lot better than we do now. And I think this is evidence of it right here, possibly, where maybe this was actually some sort of aviation building because it looks a lot like airship hangars. Uh, and on, I recently just discovered a couple here in California that are, to me, in my opinion, clearly leftover concrete rock airship hangars. Okay, and they do provide some construction photos. And if I'm being honest, some of it is kind of convincing. Um, but this is where like I've I've had my hands on some of this old expo stuff and I've I've got other where they other they they like to show like framing all around these buildings which wouldn't be that hard to photoshop wouldn't be that hard to actually just go wrap a building in that to take a picture that looks pretty real um also you know like we see these super tall rock obelisks but is are there is the, are there metal towers inside of there I, I don't know so i'm just i'm going with i don't know but i'm suspicious because like everything i just i think there's plenty of evidence of funny business going on as far as photoshopping goes and just i mean just think about how much is and this is one thing i've learned i haven't talked a lot about like what i've done work-wise or my work experience or but I've done a fair amount with content, photoshopping, video editing, um, creating brands and stories for content. And like, just in the, the, let's call it a small amount that I've done, I've seen how so easily you can just fool people. You can, it, it, it's so easy to do. Uh, there's actually a quote that I remember reading one time, but it's like, with the right out amount of editing, you could convince anyone that anything is real. And I think that's absolutely true. I mean, we're kind of like on autopilot and just not really stopping and think about it when we watch a movie or a TV show, sci-fi, fantasy, and like the visuals that we're seeing. But just imagine how convincing those are and how real and accurate those can be. And that's just like what we're being shown for entertainment, right? Imagine what could happen if someone's really trying to pull one over on you to the extent of ruling the whole world type of a situation. And just like all the little tricks in that come like in editing and in Hollywood and acting and like how you've cried during a movie, you've laughed, you felt X, Y, and Z emotion. Like you can absolutely manipulate things. Like I'm saying, just in my little bit of stuff, I've seen how easy it is to do that. Like so, so, so easy. Now add on top of that, you have all the knowledge of all the tech, you have trillions and trillions of dollars, and you have some crazy, insane, I don't understand it, appetite to rule every human. It's like, you could, re you could really do some stuff that <laughs> you could trick the public with over, like, pretty easily, which I think that's what we're looking at, that's what's happened. So I think the, you know some of the stuff we're seeing here is uh, 
kind of convincing maybe of, of construction, but again, even if they did construct it all, which I don't think is possible, uh, I just don't. And I've, to these, I've had my hands on some of these World Fair Expo buildings and walked in them, and it's just not, I don't think this is true about what they're saying, building it and then just tearing it down. I don't think they built it. I think it's left over from a lot of people, but some of these are maybe, some of these construction photos are, and I'm not gonna try and not show them like, <laughs> uh, but this this is another one where, okay, the hell, so this is the heli Klein, I guess, and this is the perisphere right here, where, I don't know, you see some framing underneath there, and maybe, maybe this is a, so yeah, it says right here, st uh, the perisphere is just starting to be removed. And so maybe that's, maybe they, this would make sense to me, right? Like maybe they started to tear it all down and while they're tearing it down, they wanna reverse engineer it, learn more about it and stuff. And so they're tearing it down, it starts to become exposed. And those pictures would be really easy to just, with the, just by title, like whatever you title them, construction or destruction, right? Like you could tear some stuff up as you're breaking everything down, take some pictures that you could easily call construction photos. And this is a look at the escalators that were inside of there, which, I mean, when I first saw that, it's like, yeah, that's exactly like escalators look now. And yeah, I think that's because they're left over from these previous peoples that built massively tall buildings and so had escalators to move up and down them. I talked about Ferris wheels a little bit. I don't remember which video it was, but I touched on the Chicago, oh, Illinois was another expo. And that was the one where they introduced the Ferris wheel. And to me, uh, the more I've looked at this, I think fer Ferris wheels are old technology that they've just repurposed as like amusement rides. Uh, and I think that's kind of what we're seeing here. Now this isn't upright like we typically think of a Ferris wheel, but same type of thing, I think. And look at these stone pillars supporting it all the way around. And this little tower over here, not little tower, but just looks like, I think it's old technology. Um, maybe maybe wind, you know, capturing wind, some sort of wind turbine or whatever. Uh, think like windmill type of a thing that converts wind into energy. Here's another look at it with some color on it. And there's even another one of these towers back there. Maybe even a couple more. See, and look at the top of this one. See, I think this is an old uh, energy wind, and I think this is old wind energy technology this whole piece right here. Then I think it's got these two pieces over here with wind technology on top of them as well. And this was really interesting. So uh, here at the, so at Balboa Park in San Diego, that's where they had the San Diego Expo and there's really good leftovers of that expo there. And that's the one where I'm like, yeah, this is, <laughs> this is just straight up ancient rock architecture. Um, but there was also a building that they slapped the name Ford on there. But this one to me just looks like, you know, so this looks exactly like uh, like little racetracks I played with as a kid with like Hot Wheels and stuff. Like whatever this building architecture and technology is, I think they turned it into a toy and gave it to kids. Just like they took all this ancient kingdoms and architecture and technologies and turned it into sci-fi movies and fantasy novels. and. Uh, world expos and fairs like I think they just took it and shoved it in our faces and said like I don't know, said whatever they said about it which just wasn't the truth about it right and uh, I don't know I think that's just interesting that when I saw this instantly I was like oh that's a kid's toy I've played with and then this was the French pavilion so one thing they do at these expos is they have different places for different city or different countries and again I think this goes back to the conquerors uniting and trying to bring everyone into one cohesive thing that they can rule. And so they're trying to uh, like just integrate all the different nations into each other. And so they've got a, a French pavilion, we'll see an Italian one, we'll see one from like Peru, I think. There's several different countries where they're, they've got different buildings for each of them. No idea what this is, they called it the GM pavilion, but that is <laughs> temporary. This is just temporary architecture, all this guys, don't forget. Um, but just, I don't know what this is, but that looks crazy. And again, with the amazing pools out in front of it. Yeah, so here's, this is Italia, another one of the countries that they're showing off. This is uh, the Japan Pavilion. And this one, 
So look at look at this rock structure right here, okay? Uh, I don't know what it is, but that's temporary. That's temporary. <laughs> that, that, come on. This was the monorail at the expo. Again, like I was like I mentioned, better transportation, whether that's on water, on rail, or in the air. I think they had it all. And look at this, 1939. I think this was like a 17, oh no, I'll, I'll talk more about a different monorail, I think, but in a second, in, in, in LA. There's like a 17 mile one also in LA. I think, again, just other leftovers. Yeah, so here's Poland. This is not Peru, I, I know they're not <laughs> very similar, but just the P's got me confused, but Poland is another one they got right here. This is t the Thailand one. Again, temporary architecture here. Just temporary this is the ussr exhibit again this this to me looks like white marble buildings and look at this huge statue on top of it with water amazing water sitting out in front of it and this is what i mean okay look at this this is a waterfall at the expo and i yeah i think they built amazing glorious waterfall like they did such cool stuff with water and I don't know how, how much I'll really say about this right now. I'd like to talk a lot more in depth about water, but um, you know, Bible will talk about living waters. And today I think we're basically drinking dead water. And a lot of this old stuff's just been dried up, decommissioned. But I think what they really knew how to do back then was rapid movement of water, strong movement of water, uh, flowing water with sunlight, oxygenates your water and charges your water. And if we look over here, look at these, like this tunnel going through it and these huge wheels over here all right so here's we'll start to look at inside of the perisphere and this is just man this is so mind-blowing to me like ah oh, it's so frustrating that they just took this down but it was temporary to begin with so that makes sense but this is so like how i how we read on wiki i guess inside of the perisphere there's a city which they named democracy city um the city of the of tomorrow and it's like all laid out inside of this sphere already and then you get to the upper levels on like moving sidewalks or whatever and you can i guess take a take some laps and see the whole city and so we've got the reflecting pool right here glass enclosed pillars here's the escalator to take you up and then yeah right here it's pointing into the city of tomorrow which i'll give you some more clear shots of that and then there's the revolving observation platforms and the automatic control room. And then speakers up here. And then also they projected onto the dome. And I've had this thought a few times now. I'm not saying I like know anything here or not, but uh, one thing I've considered is, you know, okay, they're projecting onto this dome. And if you go into uh, planetariums, there's like a machine in the middle that projects all the stars perfectly onto the dome and that sort of thing. like. And we're, you know, we're told this story of black space out there and all that. I don't buy that. I don't believe that. So I think more about what if there's some sort of projection from somewhere on the earth, in the earth, that is actually, that's what we see as stars and everything like that. Maybe it is something similar to a, a projection being cast onto a dome. And that's why right here they're showing a perfect city with a projection that casts onto the dome above it. Something to think about. Again, I don't, I don't know on that one. Just an interesting thought. And I've talked about elephants, elephant, because I, I think, I think there was much bigger, better animals. I think humans had much better relationships with them, and I think we used them. Our ancestors used them, not and not even maybe you know. I think again, I think there's pockets. It depends on certain time periods, certain civilizations. Like I'm sure some were more abusive and more like slave prone than others, but I think at times there were there was plenty of just good relationship amongst everybody and everything, plants, animals, humans. And uh, I think part of these world expos and brainwashing stuff is like, there are a lot of elephants. Um, and I think elephants, mammoths, mastodons, and some, they say that some remnants of them have been found in New York. So I think that's just kind of part of this whole story that they're trying to paint or brainwashing that they're trying to do. but. It's interesting to see elephants being paraded around. And when you look through these pictures, there were some really, really big statues and a bunch of them. And those are, again, I haven't had hands on, 
but I'm pretty sure they're just rock again. Okay, so here's an aerial shot of the Perisphere and the Trilon and the layout of the city right here, which by the way is very similar to the city that they're showing inside of the sphere. So I kind of think the city, the Tomorrow City, which is, I imagine uh, they probably figured out like a really efficient way to lay out a city energy wise, housing a lot of people wise, that sort of thing. And that's what they're showing off inside of the sphere, but also like the sphere and the trilon and the layout of the city right here itself is also that is a city that's laid out like how they're laying it out inside the sphere is kind of like a model sort of a thing. Cause look at this, this is just, this is crazy. You've got this huge perisphere right here with a trilon and water and then ponds in front of it, a huge statue right here, which I'll give you some better shots of more cooling and water ponds and like this temple looking building out here you see some domes like and how symmetrical this all is it looks like they found an energy layout here's another little look at it with some color added and yeah look at like these fountains i get this one's definitely like not a picture it's a painting or whatever but and so here's a shot at, at that fountain actual photograph of it and that's again just such amazing water engineering and here's a look at the kind of temple thing um, that's just looking like a, uh, like a motherboard, a computer chip type of thing. And then another picture of uh, just elephants, like elephants playing with elephants right here in the pond of the Perisphere. All right, so now we're inside of the Perisphere and here's a little crispier image of the city layout that they're showing inside of it. And one of the first thoughts I had was, this looks like a baseball diamond. And that made me think, because I've in some of these places I've seen baseball diamonds attached to them. I'm like, that doesn't, I don't know, maybe doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Or you can just see, like, on, if you explore on Google Maps, you can see just kind of random baseball diamonds. And I wonder if some of those, maybe not all, because we've definitely built some baseball diamonds and stuff, but I wonder if there was this type of layout sitting around. And like this is probably much bigger than a baseball diamond, but I don't. It just got me thinking because it looks. Here's home plate. Here's the outfield. Like here's the pitcher's mound. It just really got me. It they're very similar. I don't know exactly what to make of that, but I just thought that was interesting. And yeah, this is very very detailed. Here's another look at the interior of the Perisphere. You can see some people up here observing. Like look how big this is inside of there. With this, oh gosh, this thing would have been so cool to get inside of had to tear it down though. Just turn it into a park. Like look, you can see like the water. Like I wonder if there's actual water running. I would I would bet there's water running right here. Because there's water flowing right out of it as we saw in that fountain. Like I bet Yeah, I bet there's real water running right here. I wonder how big this all this actually is inside here. And uh yeah I guess I haven't said much about the Trilon, the obelisk, but I guess because the the perisphere there's much more going on in there, I guess, but this Trilon again is just so tall. Here's another construction photo. This is where I think like this wouldn't be this wouldn't be necessarily super hard to Photoshop. They're just throwing scaffolding all on the outside of it, and they've done this in a lot of a lot of other construction photos. Um, but it also wouldn't be hard really to just go do that in person either. I don't know, but. They're calling that construction when, to me, that's just whether photoshopped or done in real life, whatever. They're just scaffolding on the outside of it, and underneath it, it looks like everything's already built. So that's not that one's not really convincing me. 